Hi, I'm Claire and welcome to my channel. Um, I'm going to be talking about writing and books and uh, all sorts of crafts and nerdy things over here. To start with, I'm going to be talking about 10 books that were really influential in my life. I've seen a lot of my friends do this um, on Facebook, but I thought I'd make a video about it instead. I'm going to go in a bit of a chronological order and tell you about books that were important to me as a kid and then later on. And yeah, these are not necessarily my favourite books, but I remember them fondly for like a time of my life or they were fairly influential to me. So, to start with, number one is The Hobbit. I don't actually have a copy of The Hobbit with me because uh, my mum used to read The Hobbit to me and my brother when we were little to um, get us to sleep. It never really worked. But, uh, but we loved the story and we really got into stories and fantasy um, and we used to fight a lot about who was an elf and who was a dwarf. Second is Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey. Uh, my mom brought a copy of Dragonflight, of the French edition of Dragonflight, uh, from the library when uh, I was something like 12 or 13 and uh, gave it to me because she enjoyed it and I've been hooked on that series ever since. Um, I didn't say that I was French so that doesn't help. I'm originally from France but I've lived in the UK for six years now. I remember reading this under the cover with a flashlight until it was two or three in the morning and not wanting to go to school the next day because I wanted to find out what happened and I wanted to go straight away by the next one. I got really hooked on that series and read it for a very long time. Number three is obviously the Harry Potter series. Specifically now I'm going to talk about Goblet of Fire. Now um, I'm French and I grew up in France and uh, when I was a kid the Harry Potter books took quite a while getting translated from English into French. Um, you know something like six months. Not something that's enormous in terms of how long it normally takes books to get translated, but actually to a fan who has to wait for the Harry Potter books. You know, six months or three months was so bad. And so by the time that Goblet of Fire came out, I was a huge fan and I'd read the first three books uh, in English as well as in French as a nerdy pastime because it was fun. And so when the book came out in English, we bought an English copy and my mom read it um, really quickly and I read it at the pace of someone who reads in a second language. And so it took me something like, it took me the three or four months it took to translate the book um, to read something like halfway through about to the madness of Mr. Crouch, more than halfway through. Um, and then we bought the French copy and I read the rest of it in the evening. Um, it was such a weird reading experience, but it was the first time that I was reading a book that I'd never read before in English. And it was a huge part of my learning the language and deciding later on to move to the UK and live here. So it was hugely important to me. Number four is Northern Lights by Philip Pullman, also published as The Golden Compass in the US. I love this series. A friend told me about this book when I was about 15 and uh, told me, you know, if you love Harry Potter, you'll definitely love this book. And I really, really enjoy this series. I love the concept of the demon, the kind of the familiar animal that stays with you always. Next, I want to talk about Shakespeare. Specifically about Richard III, I was in a production of this in my first year at university and it was amazing. I played Queen Margaret, I was evil and I cackled and it was great. This copy of the complete works of Shakespeare is not actually mine. I have a really really cool set of hardbacks uh, of the complete works of Shakespeare which are um, those beautiful leather bound old fashioned books that have um, the English, the original on one side and on the other side they have the French translation. They belong to my grandfather and they were given to me uh, when he passed and they're really dear to me but they're also really heavy and they're in my parents house in France and I really hope that I can move them here sometime because I really love those books. Next is a book called The Weeping Wood by Vicky Baum. This is a collection of short stories that she's written about uh, the history of rubber 
rubber making, how it was developed, how it came from this tree. I think that seeing the history of something that was as much of a change in the world as rubber, which is just ubiquitous now, um, and seeing that through several little short stories that talk about people involved in every stage of the process is just really interesting. This book was given to me by a very dear friend of mine for my birthday. He thought I'd enjoy it because it was it's a it's a tiny hardback and uh, it's this like old-fashioned vintage cover and it is in English in the text so um, that was really I don't know it's a really interesting book and it was a really thoughtful gift so I love that book. I want to talk about No Plot No Problem by Chris Beatty. National Novel Writing Month is a challenge to write a novel every November and I started doing NaNoWriMo when I first moved to the UK and I haven't stopped. I've got six of them under my belt. This book is actually really really good if you want to start reading it in October just before you start maybe your first NaNoWriMo or something like that. It goes week by week. Uh, before NaNoWriMo and during about what you uh, should do and how to prepare and some good tips and advice. I reread this book pretty much cover to cover every November. I think it's really useful and NaNoWriMo is a huge part of my life now so um, this is a really important one for me. Next is The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. This one's really a classic of sci-fi and I hadn't read it for the longest time. I read this fairly recently, about two or three years ago, um, because I came up with a novel idea that a lot of people told me sounded like it, and I'm so glad I read this book. It's um, It's got this beautiful brevity to it. The prose is really streamlined. When you start reading books more as a writer, it's really easy to see things that you think um, you know, oh I wish they'd done this or that instead and there's none of that in that book. Um, I think it's really beautifully written and you know I really love kind of post-apocalyptic zombie stories and stuff like that and I think this is a precursor. Next is a book that I listen to as an audiobook so I don't actually have a physical copy. It's Bone Shaker by Sherry Priest. This is a really great book. It's Basically, it's a steampunk novel with zombies in the Wild West. What could go wrong? I just love it and it's inspired me a lot for the book that I'm writing now because there's a great sense of danger to the whole book. The, the atmosphere of it is really great. And last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about A Game of Thrones, the uh, first book in the Song of Ice and Fire series by George R. R. Martin. This is a really recent find for me. I only started reading Game of Thrones after watching the TV series and I've just gotten really hooked in all of the detail. I know people who watch the TV series will already say there's a lot of detail. There's even more in uh, the book. As someone who's read long series of novels since childhood, I just love it. The thing that you get with A Song of Ice and Fire uh, in book format that you really can't get as much in the TV series is the point of view characters and how much in which characters head you are just affect how you see everything. It's it's really masterfully done and so as someone who's attempting to start a career as a novelist it's really inspiring to me. So those were the 10 books that were really important to me uh, from childhood up to about now. So please let me know in the comments below if you've read any of those, if you like them, if you don't, what your 10 books would be. I've been Claire, thanks for watching and goodbye.